Hey, welcome Faith families and students. My name is Jonathan Orr. I'm the Director of Innovation of Continuous Improvement here at Faith Lutheran. And we just wanted to create this webinar today to inform you and to give you as much comfort and peace that you can have over the next couple of weeks and just uh, help you help your students and balance family life with this transition to online learning because of uh, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, today with me, I have our principals, uh, middle school principal Sarah Harper and high school principal Scott Fogo. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. And I also have with me uh, middle school counselor, uh, Courtney Burns. Hi, everyone. And of course, Esther with her, uh, with her there as well. And so, um, and so we just have an agenda and some, and some things that we want to communicate with you today. And uh, to start, but to start with, as we like to at Faith Lutheran, we're just going to start out with a, a short devotional time and just to kind of look at God's word just for, for uh, comfort and peace. Hello, Faith families. I hope you are doing well. We miss you already, students. Um, this COVID-19 virus is turning our lives upside down. Um, I think we're all struggling um, with that a little bit and how to proceed. And for me personally, I know this will shock you, but my biggest thing is I no longer have control over things, I feel like. Um, but yet one of the most important things that we can do is to encourage our hearts in the Lord. While things may feel very out of control, they are never out of God's control. And God promises to walk us through good times and these bad times. And so I just want to encourage you that we need to remind ourselves we need to remind ourselves here at Faith Lutheran and all of you out there at home um, of the truths of scripture that our hope is found in Christ and nothing else. We have a couple of Bible verses for you. If you're like us, it seems like our plans are changing every day. Every time we put something in place, something changes. And God addresses us in Proverbs 19.21 when he says, many are the plans in a person's heart but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. And I think it's important for us to realize, although God did not cause this pandemic, um, that he expects this difficult times. And so we love you, um, students. We, we do miss you. Our teachers have been working really hard um, to make sure we're ready for you. And so uh, please thank them when you have a chance. I'm gonna end with a, um, a Bible verse from Psalm 18. It says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. We know that families at home are experiencing uh, different levels and different things. Uh, some people are just kind of lazily sitting at home, and some people have lost jobs and are really struggling. We just want to remind you that God does a promise and that our Fort, he is our fortress and that he's our bedrock. He's who we are focused to. So we hope this time um, becomes a time where you get to grow in Jesus. And um, Mrs. Harper is going to end us in prayer. Please join me in your homes and in your hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, we um, know that so much is out of control right now. Thank you, Lord, that you are in control that nothing happens to us that is outside of your plan, that you can and will use this situation in our lives. Please help us to trust in you. Please grant us wisdom to make wise choices and grant us here at Faith to serve our students and families and those around us. Dear God, we need you. May we know and feel your presence. May we encourage ourselves and each other in you and may your grace, mercy, and peace flood our hearts and the hearts of our faith families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for that. For that. Um, so we just kind of want to jump into the agenda here. The first thing that we want to talk about is the schedule for the week and what that's going to look like for both our teachers and for you guys as our families. So what we have done is we have scheduled our, we have changed to a weekly format for our classes. So what that means is that every Wednesday, our students are going to be getting a checklist of items um, that, is, that they're going to work through for the entire week. Okay? So they're going to go, they can, they'll be able to go on Crusader Connect. They're going to see their, 
Um, they can go into each one of their classes and the teachers are going to have learning activities for them on a weekly basis. Things are gonna be running from a Wednesday because that's where we're starting tomorrow through the following next Tuesday. Now, when we're gonna encourage you to, you know, to every week to review that agenda and look and just see what your students have uh, to be able to do. And so there's gonna be things for them to do in all their classes throughout the entire week. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how to structure that and what that looks like a little bit long. But our classes are running from a Wednesday through a Tuesday on a weekly schedule. Now inside of that week, we wanted to make sure that our students have the opportunity to get face-to-face -face time with all their teachers. We just think that's important from an academic standpoint, and we also think that's important from just a social emotional standpoint. So when you're reviewing that weekly schedule, you're gonna see that, that they're, uh, throughout the week, they're gonna have an opportunity to interact with their teachers live face-to-face -face, um, once a week. And so um, you can see that um, you can see that schedule on the screen now as I'm talking. And so we just want you to be aware of that. That yes, we want you. We want our students to be able to look uh, to be interactive with our with our teachers, but also know that they're going to have an entire week's worth of work to do from a Wednesday through a Tuesday um, for each class. And that's going to be updated for you every week and what that and what those expectations of what that week um, will look like. Um, in terms of, um, so that kind of leads me into then, so how much time should they be working on each particular class? And how much time should that, how much time should that take? And what is that gonna look like? So I'm gonna have um, Mrs. Harper uh, address that for you. Parents and students, our teachers are preparing um, approximately two to three hours uh, of work per week per class. If your student is a high school student in an honors or an AP course, that workload could be a little bit more. Um, on a weekly basis though then, this is about 24 hours of school work per week. So it's gonna be very important for you guys to work with your child, especially your middle school child who has not had our online experience on creating and maintaining a really good um, daily routine. And actually our middle school counselor, Mrs. Burns, is gonna speak more uh, about that. So one of the things that, um, in terms of just communication that we want you all to know is that it's really important for your students to advocate to their teachers through through email and through those live conversations. We want students to feel like, like if they have trouble, we want them to be emailing the teachers. We want them to communicate with the teachers. Um, and so we just, we want, uh, email is gonna be really, really important over these next several weeks as well as Crusader Connect. But kids need to be uh, in the practice of asking questions that they would normally do live to be comfortable to reach out via email to those particular to those particular teachers. And so it's so even outside of the what that we would call the scheduled live time, let's make sure that you're that that, that written communication and you're communicating back and forth, and that that um, that the students feel comfortable reaching out via other modes of communication, and the, and uh, and the teachers will be doing the same as well. And so. Um, uh, what is, uh, you know, the next question that we have would be, what is the attendance requirements and, and accountability for, uh, for our students and how are grades and how does that all look in an online environment? I'm going to ask uh, high school principal Scott Fogo to address that for you now. Yeah, the teachers are going to take attendance for each class twice a week. And that attendance is going to be based on activities um, within the classes. That could be a homework assignment. It could be a class discussion, and it could be the time that you spend face-to-face -face if the teacher asks for that time, or your student signs up for a, a scheduled time um, to go face-to-face -face with the teacher during their scheduled class time. So those are different ways uh, that students will interact with teachers, and teachers will then uh, mark attendance based on those interactions. So that will happen twice uh, per week per class. The, the school then get an overall picture of your, the interactions uh, from your students. And if a student is not interacting at all, then we know our counselors or assistant principals or dean can get involved to make sure uh, every kid is progressing correctly through this time. Also grades, when it comes to grades, each teacher is required to take at least two grades per class per week. Now some will have more grades than that. 
um, but at least two per week from every person. So you as parents and kids can kind of follow along and make sure that you have met um, all the directions and checklists of your teachers. All right, thank you, Scott. Um, and so I'm gonna have, uh, next I'm gonna have um, uh, Mrs. Burns talk a little bit about what to do if your child is struggling. And, that, and we're gonna talk about that in, in all uh, modes, if it's academic or emotionally or, or whatnot. So um, uh, Mrs. Burns, can you go ahead and, and talk about our procedures and, and what we wanna do when kids are just really struggling? Hello, Faith families. Uh, we do miss you. Um, we miss you a lot. Um, and so one of the best pieces of advice that we can give you based on what we know from mental health experts is that in a time like this, setting and establishing a routine is really one of the most important things you can do. We want you to maintain bedtime, maintain waking up, maintain normal meal times, and really keep as much normalcy around this as possible um, because it's healthiest for our kids. And so within that normal routine does fall schoolwork. Um, and so as we're going through this and we're having face-to-face, -face, which is going to be a virtual face-to-face, -face, and your children will have links to check in on and, and have that time to feel connected to teachers and to classmates, um, know that our counseling staff, our support staff is also available in a virtual setting, by phone, by email. Some of the counselors will be on campus during this time. Um, so please do not hesitate to reach out um, through email to set up a way that would be best for us to interact with your kids. Uh, we, we really do wanna remain a good support academically, socially, and emotionally for them during this time. Um, as parents are supporting kids, we are getting a lot of questions of what that's going to look like in the academic support. And it's really important to note that we are not transitioning to parents as teachers. And so as this work is getting posted and as you're seeing your weekly schedule, the parent role in this remains a facilitator of time management and prioritizing and assisting with that. Um, there is not a scenario where we hand you a virtual packet of work and parents are expected to suddenly be able to homeschool a child um, in, in the curriculum that we've offered. Our, our curriculum is, I'm excited. I can't wait for you to see what the teachers have prepared. It's been just amazing being on campus the last two days and the interactive and engaging curriculum that's going to be offered is going to be a really unique learning, learning experience for the kids. Um, so as parents, we want you to be aware of what the schedule is, have them take a look at the topics, um, assist them with that prioritizing and checking in on benchmarks, um, and then encourage them to reach out to teachers if they have content questions and to reach out with counselors. And parents, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to counseling staff if you're worried about how your child is processing this or if you're worried about how you're talking to them. Um, we've been busy as well and, and we're prepared to help with that. Awesome, thank you, Mrs. Burns. Um, so a little bit about just the kind of the technical and nuts and bolts of what, 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 do, what do our students need at home? Well, fortunately, being at Faith Lutheran, we are a one-to-one -one school already. So all of our students have devices. In the middle school, we have the iPads. In the high schools, we got the laptops. So every student already has um, at least the hardware that they need in, in, in their hands. And so that, that, is, that is excellent and great. For some of the virtual interactions for your, for, um, when they're Zooming with their, when they have those live interactions uh, with, their, with their teachers, um, it's going to be, it's just best if they have just a, a pair of uh, earbuds and a, and a, a microphone. Um, it just makes the experience run a little bit smoother and it makes it easier for the, the audio to hear. Uh, most of your kids' cell phones probably came with a set in the box. They don't need anything special. Just a pair of earbuds with a mic attached to them is great. Um, if they know how to, they know how to uh, attach their AirPods to their laptops, those work as well. Um, but just a, a good set of uh, headphones and microphone w is, is going to be uh, really helpful, especially for those live um, Zoom interactions and the virtual Zoom interactions that they have with their uh, they have with their their teachers. Um, other than that, they just need um, you know they, some teachers might have them uh, do so just some regular uh, uh, work and then be uh, being able to to scan that in and, and be able to submit that on Dropbox. So just having a supply of of just uh, uh, some some paper and and writing utensils at home um, uh, just might would be helpful in some scenarios. And then uh, and so students 
that some teachers may recommend having a particular scanning app or whatever on their phone or iPad so they can just submit some handwritten work if necessary or if it's appropriate, especially for things like art classes and whatnot. They may have to, they may have some special physical requirements. That, so pay close attention to some of those, especially some of those specialty classes um, that, uh, that they might have to have a few materials um, outside of their, their regular digital tools that are already have been have been provided for them. Um, the next question that we want to address is, you know, all of our teachers are some are really working hard to make sure that the pacing is appropriate in an online environment. But we also know that sometimes things uh, some things will go not necessarily as planned, and and um, and your student might struggle with an online uh, type of environment. So. Uh, Mrs. Harper is going to address for us now what to do if, if work is taking significantly longer than it should or they're just really struggling with uh, the academic environment online. Okay, um, I just want to encourage you uh, a couple of things. If, if your work uh, seems to be taking you significantly longer than you feel like it should, uh, you're feeling overwhelmed by that, I, I want you to first um, consider if, if you're eliminating and removing distractions at home, <laughs> which I know can be the case. There's a lot of distractions at home, but that, that would be the first place to start is, are you, are you really removing the distractions and eliminating those at home? But if, if you are and you're still struggling or your student is still struggling with, with the workload seeming to take longer than it should, please, number one, reach out to your teacher reach out to your teachers first, inquire with them, maybe perhaps get clarification on, you know, what is due and when, uh, and those kinds of things. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the whole experience, which we can certainly empathize with, please do not hesitate to reach out to our counseling staff. Both of our middle school and high school counseling staffs are available um, for you to communicate with. Um, and then finally, Mr. Fogo and I are completely available too. So just so that you know you have a place um, where you can seek some some guidance and, and mostly support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is tech, just technical help and technical support. When you go to an online environment, there's obviously going to be some things that might um, that might just not run necessarily as expected. And so it, I want you to expect the unexpected. Things might, you know, might not work quite right or the way anticipated, but we want to make that as smooth as possible for you. Um, the first, you know, the first uh, thing is if it's something uh, uh, specifically with academics, reach out to your teacher and they'll do the best that you can, uh, the best that they can to help you with, with that uh, particular academic part. But if it's technical in nature, um, like you can't get, for example, you can't get Zoom installed on your iPad or laptop appropriately, or your, your web, your internet browser or whatnot continues to crash, or there's just something not working with your machine quite right. We, the, the, the best way to get help there is our tech, our, uh, we have a ticketing system open and to, to create a ticket with our tech support, we just want you to email tech support at flhsemail.org. And what that's going to do is it's going to instantly create a ticket for our entire tech team. And then they will immediately, um, um, in, in the queue, in the line, be able to reach out to you and offer you additional suggestions and support. And they, can, um, they, may, they may want to schedule a phone call. They may want to schedule a Zoom session. They may just be able to email back and forth and resolve your issues. But our tech team here at Faith Lutheran is great, and they are dedicated to make sure that your tech experiences during this online time is, uh, is going to run as smoothly as possible. So again, that email just to start the whole tech support process is going to be tech support at FLH, FLHS email.org and then they are going to they have systems in place to be able to reach out to you as soon as they um, as soon as they possibly can and the final thing is of course you guys are all um, very very familiar with crusader connect and and using that on a daily basis that is going to be our central hub of where teachers are going to be communicating with our students and where all of their assignments are going to be posted and so I'm going to, after we're done with this kind of question and answer, I'm going to do a walkthrough of what that looks like. But we want to make sure that your students are logging on to Crusader Connect several times a day, making sure they're checking their email several times a day, just to make sure that they don't miss any communications or they're left out of the loop um, for any type of uh, things that are going on in, um, in their classrooms. 
The other thing is um, parents and students both. Our teachers have now been trained on how to use announcements inside of their classroom. And I'm gonna walk you through in the next section how you can subscribe and you need to opt in to be there whenever a teacher makes an announcement out of their classroom to either get an email or a text message and just be notified um, when that happens. But we're gonna, we need to ask you as te uh, students and teachers, our students and parents to be able to, to go into your settings and be able to check those boxes to make sure that you receive um, that communication um, when that comes out. Finally, just in terms of a day-to-day routine, um, you know, we want to treat this like we want, we want routines to be normal. And so uh, our teachers are going to be online and working with, with you during their normal workday hours. We're going to, we have an eight to three workday. They're going to be responding to emails and communicating and conducting live Zoom sessions. And so um, expect responses from them during that time frame. Um, we also, so we also want to make sure that our teachers also have their normal routine as well. They're, they're used to going home and having dinners with their family and they have, um, and we want them to be able to have a normal life experience as well. And so um, please don't expect a teacher to respond to you after those normal work hours. We do, we have told them that they will respond to everybody within a 24 hour time frame, and, and, they'll, and they, will get to your, they will get to your emails when they are back in their virtual classrooms um, on, the, on the next day. So by all means, if you're working at night, feel free to email them, but, they're, but, the, but expect the response um, um, the following morning. Um, I think that's all we have for right now in terms of questions and answers. I'm going to follow this up with a walkthrough um, of Crusader Connect and what that's going to look like for the students. But at this time, I'm just going to, uh, to dismiss uh, Mrs. Harper and Mr. Fogo. If they want to have any closing words. Bye. We Bye. love you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you guys again. And, uh, and Mrs. Burns, if you want to have a, a goodbye wave and uh, before we just wish oh, you as well. Family, this will be over before we know it. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening and I'm going to walk you now through um, Crusader Connect and what that's going to actually look like from a student standpoint. All right, hello parents and students. I'm here now to just give you a quick walkthrough of what you can expect on Crusader Connect and what everything kind of looks like over the next several weeks as we all embark on this online learning adventure uh, together. Uh, so I'm just logged in here as a student, and so this is what they would normally see when they when they log in. And um, and most of you are pretty familiar with this interface. You're going to see their grades here and the list of their courses, and um, and they can also see their courses uh, in the drop down from classes. And so I'm just going to kind of walk you through one example of uh, what a teacher's class could look like. So I'm going to go over here to pre-stem physical science. And here you can see now, uh, here's the typical bulletin board when you come in. Uh, one thing that all teachers are gonna have there that's new um, is we've added this announcements pane to the top of the bulletin board. Every week you can expect to see an announcement be made by the teachers at least once a week. You might see them more frequently from some. But inside the announcements pane, here's week one. So we're starting online learning tomorrow. And so here's the announcement for week 318. It's just gonna give you kind of a summary of the week, anything important to watch out for, uh, possibly probably a schedule of when they're gonna be meeting live and Zoom conferences, all that kind of stuff. And so um, make sure you, you read those announcements and uh, they will always be here on the bulletin board. The other thing that you can do that's kind of really cool is you can go up here to your, uh, your name and click on settings and go down to notifications. Inside of notifications, you can tell it that whenever there's an announcement posted, see that right here, announcement posted, that if you click setup options or edit options, depending on if you've done it before, just click this link, you can go in and choose to subscribe to all academic announcements. So that basically means any announcement that's made in your classes or your kids' classes, you will get notified of that. And you just need to check how you want to get notified. If you want to get checked by email, you check this box. If you want to get notified by text, you can check this box. Okay. Right now, it says text is not available um, because I haven't gone in and put uh, my phone number in. So um, email addresses should all be in there automatically. But if you want to receive text notifications, you need to add that uh, texting number manually uh, by clicking the plus button and a new screen will pop up. Put your phone number in. Make sure you select your, uh, your provider of your um, cell service and then those text messages will be notified as well. So this is kind of a cool tip to help stay uh, informed real time with announcements as they come in if you wanna receive an email or text 
you can you can opt into those, and we highly encourage you to at least uh, subscribe to the emails for announcements. Um, so we're going to go back to pre-stem physical science. Here's that those announcements again in the bulletin board. Um, where the, the the spot that's going to be super important as with all of our classes is going to be inside the topics and assignments pages, and those are going to work hand in hand together. So we're going to start with the topics page. And when you click on the topics page, you see all the topics that teachers would normally have, but you're going to see now lessons broken apart by broken down by week. We're going to be running our online that we spoke in the webinar. We're going to be running our lessons week by week going Wednesday to Tuesday. That's the schedule. And so you'll see here's the online lesson for the week of 318 to 324. You can go ahead and click on that. And here you'll see all teachers have just a running list of a checklist type of things that your student needs to get done and prepare. So from a time management standpoint, I highly suggest every Wednesday with your student, go into this, this, um, this topic and review all of their classes and what they need to get done for the week. This is for the entire week, okay? And so you can just start to see here. You can see, all right, the first thing that they need to do is download the study guide. And they click on that, they can download it. They can go download the PowerPoint slides. They can click that, they can get that, okay? Some teachers might put some other information and text or reminders about important things for that particular week to make note of um, that are going on. So just, again, make sure you kind of read through, through that as well. Then the first, you can see the first activity here is to watch the video. Uh, this here is a, a link to a YouTube video, so you can click on that and you can go uh, watch that video. For each activity that the teachers have, um, we've asked them to put an estimated time for each thing to do, and that's for you as a parent or you as a student to really help you with your time management. So you can see, to make sure that, okay, I'm doing, uh, uh, I'm staying on pace, it's taking me the right amount of time to get this work done, and to help you schedule your week, okay? So here we go. We're going to watch the video. The next thing here is an eight-point um, uh, uh, online quiz. It's going to be in the assignments tab. And so you can go and you can go back and click on the assignments tab. And uh, because it's uh, we're not in the week yet, I'm just going to click future here so we can see that. Here's that waves and sound quiz right here. Um, and so the student will be able to click on that waves and sound quiz and be able to take that based on the, the, the previous video that they, they might have watched. And then these are just checks. These are checks for understanding, checks for learning uh, for those students as they as they uh, as they continue through their learning. Some tips with the online quizzes: make sure you do them in um, in one sitting and you're not disconnecting or closing your internet browser while you're taking those quizzes. It just it causes disconnects and and uh, and causes some issues uh, with these online quizzes. So make sure that you just you're in a stable environment, you're not going to get interrupted, um, and that you have the full time that the teacher allotted uh, and suggested for those quizzes when you when you do those. Okay. Um, the second thing is is sometimes uh, students miss at the very end a final submit button. Just make sure you hit the submit button because we've had in the past when when teachers have used these in regular lessons that the student says I did it all and then but it's not in the teacher's grade book and so uh, usually that's, that's a culprit is uh, that final kind of all submit button. So just make sure you you do that. Going back to the topics lesson, we can just kind of keep going down and, you, and you'll start to see the rhythm. Here we can go to the assignments tab and here um, uh, Mr. Blank wants him to read pages 432 to 437 and then answer the questions that are in that properties of sound um, assignment there. And, and again, he thinks this is going to take them about 40 minutes to do. So we can go back. So we make note. We open up our books. We're at 432 to 437 and I can go back to my assignments tab. And um, and here's that properties of sound, those questions that he wants them to answer right there. Again, it's not opening up until tomorrow. Uh, so um, you'll be able to click on that and you'll be able to do that with, with that. The other thing that um, I want to highlight, and you guys are kind of getting the rhythm here, here the next thing, watch another video. And then here's a discussion board. Discussion boards are going to be very prevalent through all of your classes. And so here he wants you to go uh, respond to that discussion board. So we can go over to assignments. And I'm going to find that discussion board. Here's that week one discussion board. When I click on that, here's the question of what they want them to respond to. And tomorrow when it's available, you can see there, there's going to be just a little reply box here. You can reply to that, um, write in your response. And then once you respond, you can then go in and respond to your classmates. And uh, teachers will have probably rubrics and other ways that they're grading these discussion boards. And it's going to be in an online learning discussion boards are really, really essential for, for that type of communication and getting interaction between students and teachers. And you want to be able to, to understand how to, how to do that. But that's basically um, just continue down through the week. 
um, you're going to see this, and you're going to see this type of thing for all of your classes, just uh, different items and tasks that the teachers want them to do with an estimated time frame. And parents, for you, it's going to be really important that uh, you get into that weekly routine of going in, looking at the checklist for all the classes, and just helping your kids manage their, their time. They're going to want to spend a little bit of time each day on their classes and not just try to knock one class out and then go to the next class um, sort of thing. They, you know, just just uh, you know, make make goals for each day. Maybe maybe day maybe on Wednesday I want to get through these first. I want to watch this video and get this assessment done for Mr. Blank. And then I might go over to uh, my advanced English class and get the first couple of things there done. So time management, students, parents, it's going to be extremely important that you do a kind of a weekly review of what the teacher's asking me to do. And then just develop a good solid plan that you make sure you get a little bit of that done every day. And if you do that, you're just setting yourself up for success. You're setting yourself up to, to be in a, a successful position. When next Tuesday comes around, you're going to have all of your work done. The other thing that I want to make note of, and uh, it's not here in Mr. Blank's class, but, um, but this is also where you're going to find your schedule for that dedicated one-on-one -on -one time that you'll have throughout the week. You'll see, um, You'll see uh, Zoom sessions being added and say, hey, you, want, you need to join this particular Zoom session at this particular time, and you'll go get logged in. Uh, you'll go click on, the, you'll click on that link. That link will be posted for you here, and then you can go into, um, into your teacher's Zoom meeting and have um, live interaction and, and with, your, with your teacher and your fellow students, and that's going to be extremely important for, the, for just the social aspect of the classes and for, and for um, and for the learning of uh, the material inside of those classes. So, um, so that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much how things are going to be structured. You can get everything you want through Crusader Connect. Don't forget to uh, go in and and subscribe to the announcement post. And uh, and just remember, we're here for you. Make sure you're emailing your teachers. Make sure you're emailing your counselors if you need any help or support in those particular areas.